So both the fossil and the molecular evidence leave us hanging. How about this line of evidence for the common ancestry of the animals? Now here, of course, I'm talking about one class, or I'm sorry, one phylum, that is the vertebrates, or animals with backbones. And this famous icon uh, compares the bone structures in the limbs of various vertebrates and shows that the, they're similar. If you look at the lineup of the bones, there's a certain uh, similarity in structure and position between these various limbs. Across the top, you can see the, the one bone at the top and the series of bones that follow that kind of line up with each other. Now, this was noticed before Darwin. It was called homology, similarity of structure and position. When Darwin came along, oh, uh, by the way, before Darwin, this similarity of structure and position was widely explained as being due to a common design. Construction on a common archetype was the word often used. When Darwin came along, he said, well, no, this, re this shows us that these similarities come from a common ancestor through normal biological processes. Well, it was a very reasonable theory that Darwin proposed, very different from the more uh, uh, abstract uh, or, in some cases, even creationist explanation that uh, we're dealing here with a common design or a common designer. Darwin proposed similarity because of common ancestry. So looking at the original diagram in his book, we just look at that portion on the left there and remember that uh, initial similarities would diverge into great differences millions of years down the road. And we, we construct uh, a hypothetical sequence of fossils to fit a pattern like this. Now remember, these are all vertebrates, all in one phylum. This is a very hypothetical drawing because the fossil record is actually much messier than this. Nobody thinks that it's this neat. But let's say it was, for the sake of argument. We have at the bottom a possible common ancestor uh, diverging on the left into birds with a modern bird at the top. Archaeopteryx, uh, by the way, is the second one down. On the right, we have this uh, supposed common ancestor diverging into whales with a whale at the top. And uh, the way we would conclude this is we would trace the bone structures through these fossils back to their supposed common ancestor in the fossil record and construct this sort of uh, picture of evolutionary relationships. Well, the mechanism generally cited in textbooks to account for homologous features is genetic. The idea being that similar genes are inherited by different uh, organisms, animals in this case, from their common ancestor because these genes control the development of the embryo, similar genes would produce homologous features. Do similar genes really account for homology? Well, it turns out that the evidence doesn't fit this pattern. First of all, there are cases where dissimilar genes are involved in the development of homologous features. Two examples are segmentation and sex determination in insects. But perhaps more striking and far more common we have many cases in which similar genes, in some cases so similar they're interchangeable functionally, are involved in the development of non-homologous features. And two famous examples of this are limbs, which we're looking at here, and eyes. In the case of limbs, a, a specific gene, distalis, turns out to be basic to the development of appendages, limbs, in several different groups of animals. Yet the appendages are not structurally homologous and are not thought to have evolved from an equivalent feature in a common ancestor, but to have evolved independently. In the case of eyes, we have uh, an almost identical gene occurring in flies, squids, and, and uh, vertebrates, uh, a gene that can be interchanged between them, between these uh, different phyla. And yet the eyes in flies and squids and vertebrates are structurally very different from each other and are not thought to have evolved from an eye and a common ancestor. So there's a disparity between the genes and homology. The disparity has actually been known for many years. This is something written 30 years ago by a Darwinist. What mechanism can it be that results in the production of homologous organs, the same patterns, in spite of their not being controlled by the same genes? <laughs> 
I asked this question in 1938, and it has not been answered. Well, 30 years later, in 2001, it still hasn't been answered. How do we get homologous structures from non-homologous genes? Nobody knows. But the point here is that the mechanism required to show that a succession of similarities illustrates or is evidence for descent with modification, that evidence is lacking. It has not been forthcoming. In the absence of evidence, modern Darwinists have actually redefined homology to mean similarity due to common ancestry. Now remember the initial definition of homology, even for Darwin himself, was similarity of structure and position. But for modern followers of Darwin, homology means similarity due to common ancestry. Here's a quote from famous neo-Darwinist Ernst Mayer at Harvard. After 1859, there has been only one definition of homologous that makes sense biologically. Two uh, features are homologous when they are derived from an equivalent characteristic of the common ancestor. This is a new definition of homology. Well, the problem with this new definition of homology is that once you redefine homology this way, you can no longer use it as evidence for evolution because you would be arguing in a circle. You would be saying, in effect, features derived from a common ancestor are derived from a common ancestor. You can stick the word evidence in there if you want, but it makes no difference. It's true, of course. Features derived from a common ancestor are derived from a common ancestor, but that's not evidence. That's just a circular statement. A philosopher of biology writing uh, 16 years ago complained about this. He said, by making our explanation of the definition of the condition to be explained, in this case homology, we express not scientific hypothesis, but belief. We are so convinced that our explanation is true that we no longer see any need to distinguish it from the situation we were trying to explain. Dogmatic endeavors of this kind must eventually leave the realm of science. I agree. Biologists define homology as similarity in structure between different yeah. organisms. Now this has the same design exactly as your arm. As the upper My arm. My textbook one bone. would show the forelimb, a hand, and it would show a bat's wing and a whale's flipper and say because they have similar structure, have similar bone pattern, that they must share a common ancestor. And then the five very long fingers, just like yours. The mere pattern of the bones doesn't tell you how it happened. You have to supply a mechanism to explain how it got that way. According to modern Darwinism, if two structures are similar because of common ancestry, each structure should be produced by similar genes and go through a similar pattern of development in the embryo. But contrary to these predictions, biologists are learning that homologous structures can be produced by different genes and follow different patterns of development. For example, biologists consider the body segments of fruit flies and wasps as homologous. Darwinism predicts that these similarities should be due to the same gene. But in fact, different genes account for the development of body segments in these insects. This contradicts the idea that homology must point to common ancestry. In the same way, many body structures considered homologous by biologists develop in embryos in fundamentally different ways. One example is the gut invertebrates. If the Darwinian theory were correct, the process by which the gut is constructed should itself be homologous. In fact, this isn't the case. We know, for instance, that in different vertebrates, the gut is constructed in very different ways during development. In sharks, the gut develops from cells in the roof of the embryonic cavity. In lampreys, the gut develops from cells on the floor of the embryonic cavity. And in frogs, the gut develops from cells in both the roof and the floor. So you have a homologous structure in vertebrates that is built in one way in a shark, in one way in a lamprey, in another way in frogs, and you've got these very different developmental pathways converging to the same structure. This is very hard to reconcile with Darwinian common descent. These marine reptiles were built on much the same plan as you are. I would say in the past 20 years of studying this problem that biology is now entering what can only be described as a revolution.
because the evidence is so overwhelmingly against the conventional neo-Darwinian view. Now, what about those other reptiles that flew in the air?